Hello friends, this video on equilibrium part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 and part 2. So let's take one example. A liquid is in equilibrium with its vapor. In a sealed container at fixed temperature, the volume is suddenly increased. What is the initial effect on the change of vapor pressure? Well, how does the rate of evaporation and condensation change initially? And what will happen if the equilibrium is stored finally? So let's take the same container. We have this dish of water here and it is an equilibrium. Now the volume is increased. This is increased now. Let's suppose this has become this big size. The volume is increased. So obviously the first question says effect of change in pressure. So pressure will decrease. Right? Why? Because we have told that volume and pressure are inversely proportional. So increasing the volume of this, the pressure will definitely decrease. That is my first. Let's take second. How does the rate of evaporation and condensation change initially? See the rate of evaporation, the rate of evaporation is dependent on what? So rate of evaporation is dependent on temperature only and the chemical uh, and temperature and the chemical compound. So if my temperature is not changed, chemical compound is not changed, the rate of evaporation will not change, will not change. Let's talk about the rate of condensation. If you talk about the rate of condensation, it is dependent on what? The vapor pressure. On vapor pressure. So, if vapor pressure is decreased, the rate of condensation will also decrease. Will also decrease. You understand this? See, rate of evaporation, whatever it will evaporate here, that depends on the temperature and the chemical compound of the uh, material we are talking about, for example, water here. So water is not changed here. Now the temperature is changed. It's the room temperature. The fixed temperature actually it stays here. So rate of evaporation will not change. But condensation, if you see, you must have seen, it, it depends on the vapor pressure, right? So initially there is no condensation. Now it will evaporate more, 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 more. The vapor pressure will go up and then condensation will start. And then condensation will start. So since the vapor pressure has decreased, the rate of condensation will also decrease. Done. Third, what happens when the equilibrium is finally restored and what will be the final vapor pressure? See, when the equilibrium is finally restored, the vapor pressure will be same. Because I told, vapor pressure at the equilibrium is not independent, is independent of the volume actually. If you take like big volume, small, it doesn't matter. It's independent of the volume or the amount of water you take, the property of the substance. So vapor pressure will be restored. And if you talk about uh, the vapor pressure, uh, the rate of evaporation and the rate of condensation at that time, so that time you will see the rate of evaporation will be equal to rate of condensation. So what will happen here? The moment you increase the volume, the vapor pressure will decrease, so the condensation rate will also decrease. So more and more vapor will be evaporated. Once more and more vapors are there in the system, the vapor pressure builds up, right? And then when the vapor rate of evaporation and the, when the vapor pressure becomes the original vapor pressure, that time you see the rate of evaporation becomes the rate of condensation, and that time you see the vapor pressure will stop. See, if you take some water and some sugar here and try to dissolve, you see that you are able to dissolve. But if you add more and more sugar, you get this kind of solution. But you will see that after some time, you will see that some sugar crystals are still there and you are not able to dissolve it. Correct. Why? Because it has reached equilibrium. But now, if you heat this, if you increase the temperature, you will see that the sugar crystal which was not dissolved, it will get dissolved. That means 
this guy dissolution of uh, solids and liquid is dependent on temperature also if you see if you got sugar syrup and if you cool down if you cool this what you will see this if you cool it you will see that the liquid the crystals comes out and that's what we do in crystallization right we cool things and we see that we cool the solution and we see the crystals comes out so that's why we see that when you talk about the dissolution of solids and liquid it is temperature dependent so let's talk about dissolution of gases and liquid so dissolution of gas and liquid is not temperature dependent i'll tell you first not only it is not temperature dependent it is governed by henry's law which says that the mass of gas dissolved in a given mass of solvent at any temperature is proportional to the pressure of the gas above the solvent and that is how if you see when you this coca cola bottle is uh, filled it is filled at very high pressure and that's why all these gases bubbles get dissolved but the moment you open it the pre high pressure is gone what you have is atmospheric pressure which is much less than the high pressure which at which this uh, bottle was sealed the bubbles comes out the bubbles comes out hope you are getting the point so that is why even if you heat this or cool this the the bubbles won't come out right if you take a google bottle and you cool it or you heat it the you won't see bubbles the moment you open it when you the moment you uh, put a change in pressure you see the bubbles coming out that means dissolution of the gas in liquid is pressure dependent if we write this it is pressure dependent it is not temperature dependent so let's do a recap of what we have learned till now so for a solid liquid equilibrium it exists only at one temperature that is the melting point for a liquid vapor equilibrium it also exists at a constant temperature for a solid liquid equilibrium we have the like sodium chloride and water it also exists at a common temperature but for the gas liquid equilibrium it is dependent on pressure right it is dependent on pressure the other three things are these three things are temperature dependent so hope you will keep this in mind uh, you think that for everything it's temperature only when you talk about coca cola it is pressure with the moment you open the bottle when you open it you get the bubbles so that is nothing but the gas liquid uh, equilibrium and that is pressure dependent so having studied the uh, various kind of physical equilibrium let's understand the general characteristics of physical equilibrium which you overlook the first and the most critical thing is it is possible only in closed system at a given temperature so when my system is closed you know, my chemicals can't go out heat can't go out that time only you have this physical equilibrium in open system i can't get a physical equilibrium it has to be closed system at a given temperature the second characteristic is in the physical equilibrium both the forward reaction and the backward reaction both take place simultaneously and it is dynamic it is dynamic both forward and reaction backward reaction and they take place simultaneously and they are equal right so that's why we see both the opposing process occur at the same rate same rate at the same time so it is dynamic also and when you have equilibrium reach all the measurable properties are constant we are seeing also in the cases where the pressure is constant the volume is constant temperature is constant all the measurable properties we have is constant in the equilibrium so when the equilibrium is attained by physical process it is characterized by constant value of one of its parameters at the given temperature that's why it says that all the measurable properties are constant the magnitude of such quantities at any stage indicates the extent to which the reaction has proceeded before reaching the so for example i have the lot of ice lot of ice and 
it was at temperature now let's suppose 5 degrees celsius you see out of five eyes a uh, very few of them let's suppose 10 percent of them melted but again i have some eyes and this time i have at 50 degrees celsius you see almost 90 percent will melt right because see in, in both cases equilibrium will be reached let's not take 50 it's too high let's take 20 degrees celsius let's suppose 80 percent is melted so in both cases equilibrium is reached but in one case 10 percent of the eyes got melted and there was 80 percent eyes got melted so go determine the extent to which the reaction has taken place here when i'm talking about reaction i'm talking about the conversion of water from solid stage to the liquid stage correct so we will talk more about this we will talk about uh, how to find the extent to which the reaction has taken place right but the magnitude of such quantities as i told right it will have constant values so it will have a constant value for the water or constant value for the eyes all those things will determine the magnitude or the extent to which the reaction has taken place so the first and the foremost requirement is it has to be at the closed system fixed temperature it is dynamic all the measurable property is constant and if you want to find how much reaction has proceeded before reaching equilibrium you have to uh, understand the, uh, the quantities of the system actually and then you have to calculate and find which how much uh, reaction the whole system has proceeded thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.